Born in February 1981, 13-year-old Lindsay Jo Reimer lived with her father Gordon, mother Jerry and three siblings in the West Yorkshire town of Hebden Bridge. Located in the north of England, Hebden Bridge is a picturesque market town with a population today of just 4,500 people. Lindsay was a third of four children. She had an elder brother, Daniel, an elder sister, Kate, and a 17-month-old sister named Julie. Lindsay was a bright and popular Year 9 pupil at Calder High School. She had a paper round, the proceeds of which she used to fund her biggest passion, fashion. Jerry Reimer described her daughter as well-behaved, conscientious and happy. Jerry shared that her daughter had already talked about going to university and had one eye on her future, even at her young age. Lindsay was also very organised and efficient, something that the family would playfully tease her for, referring to her as Safi, the studious and responsible character from popular British sitcom Absolutely Fabulous. Lindsay was sensible and reliable. She always told her parents where she was going and was known to always be home on time. On the evening of Monday, November 7th, 1994, Lindsay Reimer left home and never returned. At around 10pm, Lindsay left her home on Cambridge Street and began the short walk to her local spa convenience store in nearby Crown Street, where she intended to buy a box of cornflakes. En route to the shop, Lindsay stopped in at a local pub, the Trades Club, where she knew her mother was drinking with a friend. Jerry Reimer offered to buy her daughter a Coke, which she refused. It's reported in some outlets that it's at this time that Jerry gave Lindsay the money to pay for the cornflakes. After staying very briefly at the pub, Lindsay continued on her journey. Jerry Reimer couldn't know it at the time, but this will be the last time she would see her daughter alive. Lindsay arrived at the spa convenience store and is captured on CCTV browsing the aisles at 10.20pm. She is then seen paying for the cornflakes and leaving the shop at 10.22pm. Lindsay didn't return home that evening, and this is the last time she would be seen alive. The next morning, Tuesday the 8th, the alarm was raised when the Rhymers received a call from their local newsagent at around 8.15am, informing them that the ever-reliable Lindsay hadn't shown for her paper round that morning. At this stage, you're probably wondering why the alarm wasn't raised earlier. It seems that when Jerry Rhymer returned home from the trades club, she went straight to bed, assuming that her daughter was already asleep. Upon receiving the call from the concerned news agent, Jerry rushed to her daughter's bedroom to find that Lindsay wasn't there, but that her skull satchel was. Jerry ran to the kitchen where she found the money she had left out for Lindsay for school lunch still on the counter. Finally, she checked the kitchen cupboards expecting to find a box of cornflakes. Of course, they weren't there. It dawned on her at this point that her daughter hadn't returned home after going to the shop the night before. The police were called, and the search for Lindsay Reimer would begin. West Yorkshire Police set up a special crime unit to investigate Lindsay's disappearance, and dozens of officers were assigned to the search. Door-to-door -door inquiries were carried out, and hundreds of statements were taken from locals and the people in Lindsay's life. Staff at the spa convenience store provided statements, and the store CCTV shown earlier was obtained. Alongside extensive searches by the police, hundreds of locals scoured Hebden Bridge. Missing posters littered the area and were seen as far away as London. 
Mobile phones and the internet were not common at this time, and there was much less CCTV, making tracing Lindsay's steps after leaving the spa store all the more difficult. Police initially believed that Lindsay had likely run away, and speculated that she may have been having trouble at home, something that her family strongly denied. A few weeks into the search, a man came forward claiming to have seen Lindsay being dragged into a car on the night of her vanishing. The man claimed to have followed the car to a nearby reservoir. Police found the man's story to be so credible that they prepared for a helicopter and a mountain rescue team to be deployed. The same evening, the man admitted to lying about this sighting. He was later sentenced to six months in prison. With no trace of Lindsay found, and very little to work with, her case would begin to turn cold until five months later. Local council workman Andy Glover and his colleague were carrying out their weekly routine task of walking the length of a strip of the Rochdale Canal, a canal that ran through Hebden Bridge. Their job was to check for and remove debris from the water, to inspect lock gates, make repairs and to remove any potential blockages. They would regularly find and remove dead animals from the water. On the afternoon of Wednesday, April 12th, 1995, just over a mile upstream from Hebden Bridge Town Centre, Mr Glover spotted on the surface of the water what he assumed to be a dead sheep. It wasn't a pleasant job, but Mr Glover prepared the hook he would typically use to remove debris from the water and began pulling the object towards the bank of the canal. Just a few feet away from the bank, the object turned over in the water. It took Mr Glover a few seconds to process the horror of what he had found. It was clear that the object was a human body. Mr Glover noticed a few strands of hair rested on the person's face and immediately knew that he had found the girl that had featured in the local news and on the missing persons posters in town. He knew he had found the body of Lindsay Reimer. Mr Glover called the police on his mobile phone. He guarded the scene while his colleague went to meet the police as they arrived in the area. The scene was cordoned off, a forensics unit was called in, and eventually, Lindsay's body was removed from the water. Home office pathologist Professor Mike Green, one of Britain's leading pathologists at that time, conducted the autopsy on Lindsay Reimer's body. Despite the state of decomposition, Professor Green was able to ascertain that Lindsay's cause of death was strangulation. The signs of strangulation included Lindsay's voice box having been slightly flattened against her spinal column and a, quote, prominent band of congestion across the middle area of the neck muscles. Professor Green found no signs of sexual assault. A coroner ruled that Lindsay had likely died not long after leaving the shop on the night of her disappearance. The only evidence found at the scene was a large stone which had been used to weight Lindsay's body down in the water. It would seem that Lindsay's body surfaced when the stone came loose, presumably due to the changes her body had undergone while in the water for over five months. The Rhymers were informed of the discovery of their daughter's body. Flowers were laid at the scene and a vigil was held. Jerry Rhymer had walked by that strip of the canal almost daily in the five months that her daughter had been missing. She reports having become paranoid and suspicious after the discovery of Lindsay's body. When she walked around Hebden Bridge, she would eye each person that she passed. Could it be one of them that killed her daughter? At one point, Jerry didn't leave the house for months. She pulled herself through this terrible time by prioritising her children, particularly her baby daughter who needed her mother. West Yorkshire Police launched a murder inquiry and revisited every aspect of their initial missing persons investigation. They strongly suspect, and still suspect to this day, that the killer was a local man. Despite the discovery of Lindsay's body, they still had very little to work with. In total, police spoke with over 5,000 people in relation to Lindsay's case and explored known offenders across the West Yorkshire area. In November 1995, to mark a year since her vanishing, Lindsay's older sister Kate bravely took part in a police reconstruction of her sister's final known movements. To coincide with this, 150 officers descended on Hebden Bridge and spoke with over 1,000 people in the town. Two men convicted of violent crimes against women would be considered in the investigation. 
After the 1998 conviction of serial rapist John Oswin, police considered his involvement in Lindsay's murder. Oswin's crimes were committed across the West Yorkshire area, with his first rape carried out on a public walkway near a canal and his second on a canal towpath, both in the Halifax area within around 10 miles of Hebden Bridge. There was no evidence found to link Oswin to Lindsay's murder and there was no sign of sexual assault on Lindsay's body. The second man considered in the case was John Taylor. In 2002, he was sentenced to life in prison for the 2000 murder of 16-year-old Liam Tiernan, who was found strangled to death less than a mile from her home in Bramley, West Yorkshire, in 2001. Years later, DNA obtained from Taylor would link him to several other rapes. Police strongly suspect that Taylor may be a serial killer. After his conviction, West Yorkshire Police reopened four of their cold case murders, including Lindsay's. Again, no evidence was found to link Taylor to Lindsay's murder. With no leads, Lindsay's case would turn cold. In 2015, following a 20-year anniversary appeal to mark the discovery of Lindsay's body, a person previously unidentified in the sparse CCTV footage came forward. Though this person could offer nothing to advance the police investigation on this occasion, I think that this small development helps to highlight the importance of continuing to pursue cold cases. 20 years after the murder, a person that may well have forgotten about the death of Lindsay Reimer had had their memory jogged by the sight of themselves in a piece of black and white CCTV footage in which they were captured probably buying some milk and a packet of cigarettes. In an otherwise totally forgettable everyday event, the person in the CCTV footage didn't know for over 20 years that they had witnessed the final moments of a young girl's life. At this time, police also revealed that they were pursuing other unspecified leads garnered from their renewed appeal. Most significantly in 2015, West Yorkshire Police disclosed that they had in fact found an unspecified piece of DNA evidence either at the Rochdale Canal scene or on Lindsay's body. With the huge advances in DNA technology since 1995, police were hopeful of a potential breakthrough and it's at this time they began working with a team of Canadian forensic specialists. In 2016, West Yorkshire Police got their breakthrough. A DNA profile had been obtained. Again, exactly what the DNA sample was, where it was found, or how it was possible that the sample was salvageable after five months in water and then over 20 years in storage, or even how the sample was conclusively found to not be a contaminant from five months in the murky waters of a canal is not known. The biggest potential breakthrough in the case came in November of 2016 when a 63 year old man living 15 miles from Hebden Bridge in Bradford was arrested on suspicion of Lindsay's murder. Police briefed the media that the arrest came as a result of the 2015 DNA breakthrough. In the UK, police are permitted to detain a person for no more than 24 hours before they must bring about charges. An extension of up to 96 hours can be granted if a person is accused of a serious crime. West Yorkshire police were granted an additional 24 hours to question their suspect. After this, the man was released on police bail. In April 2017, a second man, aged 68 and also from Bradford, was arrested and questioned in relation to Lindsay's murder. Again, this man was released on police bail. Both men would eventually be released from bail, with police saying, quote, no further action is being taken at this time. It's unknown who the men are, exactly what potentially links them to the crime, if they know each other in some way, or if police even still consider them suspects or persons of interest. There have been no further updates in over five years, and the murder of Lindsay Reimer remains unsolved. Jerry Reimer and her two daughters, Kate and Juliet, have all shared their personal experiences with processing the grief of their loss and dealing with the lack of answers and closure in Lindsay's case. The family remains committed to finding the person who stole their daughter and sister. Speaking to media, Jerry Reimer said, My little girl deserves justice. We live in a complete state of turmoil, not just on anniversaries, but every day. I need to know what happened to my daughter. She didn't deserve to die.
Lindsay Jo Rymer was 13 years old when she was murdered sometime just after 10.22pm after being sighted leaving a spa convenience store on Crown Street in Hebden Bridge, West Yorkshire. Lindsay is presumed to have been headed in the direction of her home on Cambridge Street, but it's unknown how far from the shop that Lindsay had got before being set upon by her killer. She's described as a white female with hazel eyes, a fair complexion and brown shoulder length hair which she wore in a ponytail. She was last seen wearing dark jeans and a light grey hoodie. She would have been carrying a box of Kellogg's cornflakes. If you have any information in Lindsay's case, then you can contact the police non-emergency line on 101 or call Crime Stoppers anonymously on 0800 555 111.